James was not in a good mood. He grumbled dreadfully as he hauled a long line of dirty trucks across a grey, unfamiliar landscape. He had unfortunately been in the wrong place at the wrong time. A diesel from the other railway had broken down and it needed to take a goods train from Barrow to a little station in the countryside. James had been at Barrow when the news came in, and as the only engine available, what came next was inevitable. To James, pulling trucks was bad enough. Pulling dirty trucks was even worse. But pulling dirty trucks in an unfamiliar environment, on a railway that had thrown this kind of engine onto the scrap heap, felt like a living hell. James knew better, however, than to try and make a huge fuss. It would not only make things worse for him, but would also attract the fat controller's attention, and not in a good way. Besides, the station wasn't too far from Barrow, and all he had to do was leave the truck, refill on coal and water, and then he could return to the sanctuary that was the island of Sodor. Soon, James reached his destination. The station was a small, simple one, with two platforms, but overall seemed well kept after. The station master stood waiting as James pulled up. Oh, thank you very much, he said. I was worried this wouldn't come in when that diesel broke down. Good thing you were around. There's a water tower and coal bunker over there. He pointed to a set of sidings behind the opposite platform from his. He could make out the tower and bunker, only slightly illuminated by the station lights. He could also see several boxy shapes lined up on one of the tracks. James assumed they were a line of vans, but upon closer inspection, he found out he was wrong. The boxy shapes were not vans or rolling stock of any kind. They were actually a long line of diesels. James recognised them as Class 08 shunters. He had seen many of them at Barrow's Yard. From what he heard, they were one of the most efficient modern shunters, as well as one of the other railway's most successful diesel designs, though. But so many shunters would be here. A little station like this shouldn't need that many. Once he had shunted his trucks away, James steamed over to the water tower and coal bunker. The diesel stood in front of him, on the opposite siding. James didn't make eye contact. He was not in the mood for a conversation. So he sat there, waiting, as his crew went about refilling his tender. I can't remember the last time I saw a steam engine here. James looked up. There were no people around, other than his driver and fireman, and he knew that voice wasn't theirs. James glanced over at the diesel of the line, staring blankly at him, its eyes weary and lifeless. James also noticed its body, rusty and dirty. It would seem it hasn't been cleaned in a long time. Then again, most shunters James saw were rarely looked after, in terms of their appearances. So he didn't think much of it. What's it to you? He grunted rudely. The diesel said nothing for a moment. It looked at the red engine all over. You are quite a sight around here. Never seen a steam engine so clean, nor in such a bright colour. Well, my railway has taste when it comes to liveries. Is that so? Where are you from? Seldor. So that's why you looked so familiar. James stared. The second voice came from behind the diesel, from the second one in the line. It wasn't as rusty as the first, and James could tell it had once been in a black livery. Then he looked at its face gasped. It was a face he had seen before. Death Dental? It was him. And yet, he looked so different. He 
didn't seem like the devious, deceptive shunter he and the other engine saw all those years ago. Instead, he looked tired, sad, and quite lonely. Oh, so you two have met? On his railway long ago for a brief time. It didn't go well. What are you doing here? In fact, what are all of you doing here? Why would a station and yard this small need so many shunters? And who said we were shunters here? James raised an eyebrow. That was an unusual response. What do you mean? He said it wasn't clear from our conditions. We are not shunters not anymore. We have all been put here to await our inevitable fates. Now, James was even more confused and also a little nervous. The tone in this Diesel's voice was starting to make him feel uneasy. But he tried not to show it. What? What fate? Still gave a groan, oh. filled with frustration. That's why you weren't on his railway long, Diesel. He was that blind and brainless it was driving you insane. He was interrupted by James as he let off steam furiously. For your information, Diesel tried to frame one of our engines, but we found him out and kicked him off our island. You think that just because I'm a steam engine, you have any right to insult me like that? I'm just baffled that based on all that you see, you can't come to the obvious conclusion. What obvious conclusion? You're all going to be scrapped, James. No one said anything. The silence lasted for quite some time. Then, James started to laugh. <laughs> the two diesels gave no response. Don't be so ridiculous! Do you really think you're in the same boat as our steam engines? Most of us are gone now because of you diesels! How can you be under any threat? The diesel sighed heavily. It seemed he was finding James quite exhausting. So that explains it all. You aren't brainless. You just don't know the truth. You've grown up on the belief that only steam engines are in danger of being scrapped. But diesels, they get off free. Nothing for them to fear at all. For a time, I once thought the same thing. A few of us here did. We thought we would never be thrown away, and that we would last forever, as long as we could function. However, the men at the workshops are always working. Working to either improve old designs, or create new ones. And sometimes they come up with something that meets all their expectations. Something that makes the old designs obsolete. And when they become obsolete, they are thrown away. Not if they are steam or diesel. If there is something simply better than them, then there's no need to keep them around. The diesel finished by taking a deep breath, and then went silent, seemingly waiting for a response from James. James didn't say anything. He had been listening closely, and was thinking it all through. He couldn't deny it did make some sense. Railways always did strive to be the very best they could be, and that always meant new creations in either the motive power or how goods and passengers were carried. Even so, he wasn't entirely sure if this really did apply to Diesels, as the one in front of him claimed. Diesel was watching the red engine closely, and could tell exactly what he was thinking. If you still don't believe what the engine is saying, how do you explain that over there? His eyes turned to his left. James looked over to what he was referring to. He looked over to what he was referring to. And then he froze. Uh, wha wh what? What he saw couldn't be real. There was no way it was. There, on the ground alone, stood the rusted remains of a diesel. The same kind as the ones that stood before him. It was faceless, had no wheels or buffers. It was nothing more than an empty shell. 
That poor engine was caught up two days ago. He accepted it, but only hoped it would be quick and painless. Unfortunately, that isn't how it goes. James felt sick in the boiler. He looked at the long line of diesels, most of which hadn't spoken once, or even responded to anything that had been said. He could only imagine now how they must feel. Lonely and worthless. James for many years had made his distaste of diesels very clear. He thought almost all of them were rude, disrespectful and troublesome. There were exceptions of course, Boke, Bear, Abers and Daisy. They were a minority. What he didn't make public though was that to some extent he wished that diesels also faced the scrapyard. That way, they would get a taste of their own medicine. He believed such a thing would never happen, but he still thought about it. Now, he had come to the realization that what he had wished for was happening, and yet, it felt wrong. It was horrific and undeserved. Even for Diesel, did all those years ago was truly disgraceful. But this, this was too far as a punishment. No engine should ever have to go through this. Just then, James's crew entered his cab. He had been fully refilled with coal and water, and it was now time to leave. James looked over at the diesels one final time, who just stared blankly back. As the driver opened the regulator, James spoke quietly. I'm... I'm sorry. Without saying any more, James puffed out of the siding and began his long journey back home. It was getting late when James was finally back on Sodor. The journey had been silent, save for his constant puffing. He hadn't spoken a single word. He arrived at the mainline sheds. There were only a few engines currently inside, having conversations with each other and taking little notice of James. He then looked over to the far left corner, left corner, and saw Edward resting on his own. James felt a small sense of warmth. If there was any engine he could be open to, he knew it was him. The old engine smiled as he saw James. Good evening, James. I heard you had quite a journey beyond Sogol. How was it? James's warmth immediately vanished. Already he was given a hard question. He said nothing as he puffed forward onto the turntable. Edward was surprised. James had rarely wanted to be so silent. He would always expect a remark of some kind, especially now. And yet... the matter? James looked up at Edward. He was unsure if he was really ready to tell Edward what had happened. But he knew Edward was worried, and saying nothing wouldn't get rid of that. So, he took a deep breath and told him everything. He told him about Diesel, about the other shunters, about what they said, and how he had learned a cold hard truth that struck back so many things he had believed for years. Edward listened carefully. Oh, I'm sorry, James. No engine should ever have to see something so horrible. He looked closely at James, noticing his expression. Not only could he see sorrow, but also guilt. He didn't need to ask, though, as he knew exactly what he felt guilty of. As hard as it may have been, I can tell you have learned a very important lesson. James completely understood. He slowly backed further into the dark corner of the shed. A sadder and wiser engine. 